Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're gonna be nicer to retail staff after watching this video. You mean we will just fall out of space? Let me start by saying that yes, this is a new account. I hope this fits the subreddit because I just can't stop laughing about this incident that happened at work a couple of weeks ago. I currently work at a locally owned dollar store. We also fill helium balloons and make balloon bouquets. It is important to note here that there is a helium shortage in the country, or world. This means that my store is now only allowed to buy 3 tanks of helium a month from the vendor, even though in the past we've been allowed as many as 9 a month. As you can imagine, this has caused our customers a great deal of confusion. I had always known that helium was a non-renewable resource, at least since I was young. But I certainly didn't know all of the facts, so I spent some time when I was off work researching so I could correctly inform customers of what helium is, where it comes from, and what the current situation is. Anyway, I had a customer come in asking for balloons toward the end of the month. Unfortunately, we had already went through our 3 tank a month allotment and were out for the month. This is how the conversation went, as well as I can remember. Customer is C, me is M. Hi, I would like 25 balloons please. Oh, I am so sorry, but we've run out of helium for the month. We'll have it back on the first of the month, though. Oh, how can you be out? Well, our vendor recently made a rule that we can only order three tanks of helium a month. You know there's a shortage right now, right? What? A shortage on helium? How? Well, do you know where helium comes from? Uh, no. It actually comes from the Earth, and it's a non-renewable resource, so once it's gone, it's gone forever. Customer goes from confused to slight understanding and then to horrified. So you mean, if we mine all of the helium, the earth could fall out of space? She was actually kind of screeching at this point. I'm super confused and horrified she could even think that. Also, I'm not quick with responses sometimes. Uh, I, that is not how it works. The customer is leaving. I am never buying balloons again. I'm sorry this got so long, but I still laugh about the falling out of space part. I hope you enjoyed. I can imagine her running off and telling all her friends and family to stop buying balloons, or starting a petition to boycott balloons and freaking out at children's birthday parties. <laughs> Tales from the farmer's market, the one we threw back. For many years, I've been helping out a farmer friend at a couple of farmer's markets. He grows and sells a wide range of organic vegetables, which are freshly picked and beautifully presented at the stall. He is a man who has as little patience for fools as I, and who is happy that we both have the capability to scorn customers who cross boundaries of common human decency. I'm not an unreasonable man, but I do have my limits, and occasionally there are circumstances and customers that push me over the line. I'm going to call this woman Rose, even though she's the least florid of people. Frankly, she has a face that could stop a clock, looks like a six foot dribble of sour milk and has a grating whine of a voice. She's been a regular at this market for years, and her reputation is such that everyone knows her by both name and reputation. There are people, vendors and customers at the market who literally hide from her as she's such an awful woman. She exhibits all the worst kind of behaviour, not limited to criticising other vendors' products, interfering in other customers' transactions and choices, and picking through the projects to find the very best. She is also a time sink, as she'll have a dozen questions about what we're selling, in addition to trying to involve everyone in the conversation about what she's buying. Despite this, we have for years put up with her. Until this day. It was a Thursday, and it was a busy market. In addition to the usual shopping crowd, there are a good number of chefs buying ingredients on a Thursday, and it can get a little hectic. There are two of us working, the farmer, Richard, and myself. In comes Rose. She attempts to engage Richard in conversation. He's not taking the bait, as there are a number of other customer transactions in progress. I'm dealing with a couple of chefs who have large orders. Richard is handling some smaller transactions at the other end of the stand. Rose is running up and down, picking out her shopping, all the while asking questions of Richard, regardless of his dealing with other customers. She's also making comments on some of the customer's purchases, something I'd taken her to task about some months earlier. Richard really is a diamond in the rough. He's intolerant of fools, but is also a patient and very kind man. And even though I'm also very busy, I can detect from both his voice and his body language that he's struggling to remain polite with her. The two chefs I'd been dealing with were well aware of who she was and what was going on, even to the point of raising questioning eyebrows at me in her direction. Once I dealt with him, I stepped over to help Richard out in the hope of deflecting Rose a little. Sadly, she's having nothing to do with me. 
We have a little history, and she's wary, and continues pestering Richard and generally being a loud pest. After 15 minutes of choosing her stuff, she's ready to pay, and Richard gives her the total, which was $10.50. I have a very vivid memory of her fussing over getting the correct change, all the while griping about something totally irrelevant to the transaction. After she'd gone, Richard looked wrung out, and I don't blame him. Rose is a very high maintenance woman. We briefly discussed her and swapped a couple of war stories and then got on with the rest of the day. A little while later, Richard had gone to water the horse and do a little shopping of his own, and Rose came back with a scar on her face. Apparently she'd found something that we sold at a cheaper price elsewhere and was moaning about it. Of course she asked if she could return it to us and get her money back. I was furious. Richard had spent a quarter of an hour dealing with this woman and I was done. The conversation went something like this. I just found out that the other farmer has cheaper chard and I'm returning this. I thought you didn't like the other farmer. Well, his chard is cheaper. You spend 15 minutes picking through everything we had and now it's not good enough? But cheaper chard? Rose, I think we've all had enough of you. I didn't even get a please may I return it. Well, you were rude to me once. Once, for which I apologized. In any event, we're done here. You've been consistently rude to everyone here, including our other customers. I don't want anything of yours now, take it back. Okay, fine, here's $10. I pay $10.50. I know, there's a 50 cents restocking fee. Rose was totally speechless for the first time ever. You're no longer welcome here. She stormed off, shouting that she was never coming back. I called after, telling her she was fired. Not part of my childish lack of professionalism, but it was admittedly very satisfying. The epilogue. The market manager told me afterward that she complained to him about my behaviour. The CEO of the market association emailed me later that day telling me she'd asked for me to be banned from the market and reminding me that I couldn't charge a restocking fee. Recognising a caviar's email, I responded telling her that she could return at any time, but only once, to have her full purchase price refunded. She never did. Off the record, CEO and I did laugh about it, and I understand that a few other vendors have since told her she's no longer welcome. But then she never was really welcome anywhere, just put up with. Oddly, another chef asked me why I was in such a strange mood. I told him I'd fired a customer and was on a bit of an adrenaline high. His response? Was it Rose? <laughs> Perfect. I feel a strong sadness for anyone who lacks the ability to talk straight to customers who are nitwits, and having read many tales both here and tales from tech support, I light a candle for y'all and pray for your deliverance. She sounds like an absolute nightmare, like a person who goes through all the milk in a grocery store looking for a later expiration date. But I hope she's learned her lesson and decides to be a nicer person going forward. Wishful thinking though, huh? Woman gets mad at me for using the motorized cart. Hey all. I posted a while ago on here about a run-in with a would-be hero, if you'd like to read that story, I'll link it at the end of this one. As for my story today, I had another similar experience happen just a few minutes ago. I figured typing this up would be a good way to spend my lunch break, to LDR at the bottom. I work as a courtesy clerk for my local mega chain grocery store. Cart collection, cleanup, and customer service are my main workloads. As with most mega chain stores, we have a motorized cart for any customers that may have problems with walking. I don't know what the situation is for other stores, but if the user wants to, they can drive the cart out to their car, provided someone escorts them so the cart can be brought back in. The cart sort of works the same way a lawnmower does. Even if it's on, it won't work unless a pressure switch and the seat is triggered, someone has to be sitting on the seat. It's awkward walking alongside the cart while pressing down on the seat with one hand and guiding it with the other, so most clerks just ride it in, which most people don't have a problem with. Note that I said, most people. I was called to the front to help a man using a cart with loading up his car. I followed him out, did the deed, received a tuning for my troubles and proceeded to drive the cart in. As I went in through the doors, I passed a couple who were leaving with their groceries. The woman gave me a confused look as I drove past them, but I paid it no mind. I drove the cart back to its charging station, hooked it up and began walking off when I heard a shrill voice behind me. How dare you! Have you no shame? I turned around to see a woman from the couple I had just passed on their way out walking up to me with a look of malice on her face and a swagger in her step that said, you're in trouble and I'm going to put you in your place. I'm sorry, but are you talking to me? I asked the woman. Who else would I be talking to? She snapped back. You have the audacity to drive around in that handicap cart when you can walk just fine. Oh, no, I wasn't driving around in it. 
I was bringing it back in after a customer was finished with it, I politely retorted. That still doesn't give you the right to drive around on it and waste the battery. What if someone who actually needs it comes in? Ma'am, the cart goes into charging mode whenever it's not in use, and it has a long battery life. Me driving it back into the store won't drain it instantly, and I wouldn't be able to use it unless I drove it back in. Stop making excuses for your laziness. This woman shrieking had gotten some people's attention, one of which was my department's manager. She walks up to the woman and says, Excuse me, miss. Is everything alright? No, the lady barks. Your employee is dicking around on the handicap cart and trying to lie his way out of it. My manager turned to me and asked me to explain. I told her about the customer and how he took the cart outside, so I was just bringing it back in. At that point, the woman barged back into the conversation. But that doesn't give you the excuse to use it. My manager told her to calm down and reiterated that the cart wouldn't work unless someone was sitting on it, so it was 100% okay for me to drive it back to the store. The woman wasn't having it though. She still tried to argue that I shouldn't be using it if I wasn't in need of it, that it takes the cart away from those who really need it, blah blah blah. My manager heard enough and told the woman if she didn't peacefully leave, then security would be called to escort her out of the store. She let out a loud, hmm, and walked out of the store. Alright, so first of all, it was none of her business. But second of all, the employee and the manager gave a perfectly reasonable excuse as to why he would have to sit on the cart to get it back to the store, but it wasn't good enough. I think she's seen an opening to start an argument and just went for it full force. And people like that are just mind-bogglingly sad. Okay, so that's all for r slash Tales from Retail. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description and any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!